Hello! Today we have some Flycy acrylic paint markers. And these are a set of 18. They say they're sunproof, waterproof, 0.7 millimeter nib. And they say they mark on anything and are water based. So I wanted to take a look at these today. It says that they write on stone, leather, ceramics, glass, metal, skin, paper, plastic, cloth, and wood. So they're kind of meant to be used on anything. So I wanted to take a look at these. They seem really fun. The pens are individually plastic wrapped, which is really weird, but it kind of makes sense in this. Normally I don't like when things arrive individually wrapped, but if one of these pens were to explode in the box on the way to you, at least this way, one exploded pen is not going to ruin the entire set. So I can kind of see it this way. It's still a little bit awkward though. The pens themselves, they feel really nice in your hand. They feel fairly sturdy. I really like the, uh, the weight of them. And you shake them up and you can see this little thing inside that is moving the paint around. You can't hear it because unfortunately the audio for this section was really messed up so I'm having to voice over it. But they have a lot of really nice bold colors and I really like those. And we'll take a look at the nib. And they're these really hard plastic nibs. They're not felt nibs like a lot of paint markers will have. And I wasn't so sure about this at first, but as I started to use it, it really did change my mind. So I wanted to take a look at these, get swatches of them, and see what I could do with them because I thought it might be kind of fun with Halloween coming up to make some little Halloween ornaments with these. So let's swatch these and see what we can do with them. So these things, because they have a really hard plastic nib, they do leave pretty heavy indents in your paper if that's where you're priming it. So I would actually recommend priming it on another surface instead of trying to prime it on your paper. But I do really like these plastic nibs, actually. They give you a really nice fine point to the pen so that you can get these really nice small details. And also because they're plastic, they're a lot less likely to fray or snap or come apart the way that felt nibs do. But the colors are really nice and bold. They are fairly small pens though, so they don't have a whole lot of paint inside of them. So these are really more suited for embellishments rather than an entire piece, which you will see a little bit of that later on. I also wanted to see how well the lighter colors would layer over dark, so I put down some black and let it dry, and then I painted over it with the white, and at first it did seem like it was fairly opaque, but it needs two or three coats because the black does show through once it's dry. I also got a set of these Gaudy Deal acrylic paint markers, and I've used a lot of their other things before. Their paints I find tend to be pretty good, so I wanted to check them out but they're pretty much the same thing. They work on glass, ceramic, wood, canvas, and stone, or class, as it says. So I wanted to check these out, and they're a little bit bigger. It's a smaller set pen-wise, but the pens are a lot bigger, and they have a lot more paint in them, but they're the same principle. You shake them up, you mix up the paint, and these ones have a really big, thick felt nib instead of the tiny little plastic ones. So I thought it might be kind of fun to use both of these sets and try them out. And again, we have a lot of really nice bold colors. You want to prime them somewhere else, probably not on paper because it will leave dents in your paper. But these are fairly opaque. They did layer pretty well and they have really nice bright colors. So I thought the two sets the really big one for larger areas and washes, and then the fly C ones for details might go really well together. So I've got all of these little wooden blocks and tiles that seemed like they'd make good canvases for some Halloween ornaments. So I went ahead and grabbed the tiles. I wasn't sure how many I'd have time to do. And I didn't do any kind of thumbnailing or sketching first. I just kind of decided to see what came out of the tile. And I tried to use the Fly C marker first for the background, but 
the grain on the tile was not playing very well with that small nib and I realized pretty quickly that using the entire marker on it was going to run it out very quickly. So I thought instead what I'd do is try to blend the colors because the purple gaudy deal pen was a lot lighter than the fly C one. So I put down some black first and then I wanted to layer up from the purple. And the gaudy deal markers are really good for doing these background colors because they have that felt nib. It doesn't catch on the grain of the wood very much. I probably could have sanded them down, maybe should have sanded them down, but it didn't occur to me until after I was done. But these pens did layer really well. I put the purple on the black before the black had had a chance to dry. And I kept running into this issue where the tile just wanted to slide all over the desk. So I just taped it down. Didn't want to have a border on it. So I just put down a loop of tape, taped it down. And that did secure it pretty nicely. In that little time though, the black paint did have a little bit more of a chance to dry. So I wound up with this really nice gradient from a really dark black on top with just a hint of purple to a brighter purple on the bottom. And I really liked how that turned out. And I was just kind of trying to dry it off there. Um, I didn't want to put down anything with everything still wet. So there was a lot of waiting around for things to dry. And I think eventually I gave up, paused the recording and just came back to it a little bit later. I also had these other metallic markers that weren't from the Fly C set. I think they had come earlier from another set, so I decided to use those as well. Um, and it's pretty typical, it seems like, to have a gold and a silver metallic marker for a lot of these paint sets. Because every single paint, uh, paint marker set that I have has a metallic gold and a metallic silver. And then I think the other set also had like a white or a black. I can't remember. But I wanted to see how well it worked to blend wet paint on top of wet paint for this one. And it came up with this really, really distorted, almost greasy look to it. And I thought that worked so well. The way everything kind of blended together and smooshed up. So this one was just some cute little bats in front of a moon. I wanted to add more bats in front of the moon, but it didn't really work out because I would have had to sit down and wait for it to dry again. And I didn't want to do that. I was kind of in a hurry. And then for this one, I wanted to do something that was very, very blatantly Halloween and just kind of try to draw a pumpkin. And it wasn't the best pumpkin, but I did try to do at least an under sketch. And I've noticed this when I use my markers on these tiles as well. For some reason, the direction of the grain seems to make all of the difference. And I accidentally had the grain going vertically. So the lines on the wood were going up and down instead of horizontally like I did on the last one. And for some reason, I don't know why it is. It might be because I tend to do my strokes vertically. But for some reason, this one bled all over the place through the grain of the wood. And I wasn't even surprised because I knew this had happened from using these tiles with my markers. Because every time I use markers and I don't pay attention to the direction of the grain, the markers bleed. I guess it was a little bit more surprising that the paint pens bled. I didn't really expect that, but there they go. So it was just kind of frustrating to, to keep dealing with that. Also, I was really hoping that since the colors between the sets didn't really match, they, they did, for instance, both have a yellow, they both had an orange, they both had a purple. And I was kind of hoping that they would be obviously lighter or darker than one another when I put them next to one another, because when I did the swatches, they did seem really different. But here on the tile, the darker, uh, the darker pigment didn't look too much darker 
so I tried to fix that with just a little bit of gold. But Halloween has always been my favorite holiday. My husband and I go pretty hard for it. Uh, we are usually the neighborhood that hands out the really big candy bars and we have a skeleton that we dress up and he hangs out outside. We just put a bike lock around him and lock him to the rail on the porch and he hangs out there for a while and we might move him out here um, on the first. I didn't want to put him out too early this year just because it's been a hectic disaster. So this whole thing now with the situation in the world and everything that's going on, we're not sure what we're doing for Halloween this year. What we might do is just get a bowl, buy the candy that we normally buy, put some toys out there uh, in another bowl, and just dr chain Fred up to the rail like I do every year and hand him a bowl and just periodically refill the bowl. I'm not going to put the entire box of giant candy bars out there though just because the one kid that shows up will take every single one and ruin it for anyone who comes who comes next so we'll just uh figure it out i guess but it is really disappointing that halloween will probably largely be canceled i don't even really expect any kids to be showing up but we've always been the house with the big candy bars so we're going to still do it we just have to do it in a way that's a little bit more safe because for those of you who don't know he works at an assisted living facility so we have to be really careful about him getting sick and about me getting sick because if either one of us gets sick he could take that to work if he doesn't realize that he's sick and that would just be a huge problem so we can't even take the risk of handing out kid handing out candy face to face which is disappointing but I'm not really sure what else we can do. We haven't even decorated. Usually we decorate on the 1st of September. And just with everything that's been going on, we just haven't even bothered. It's been really sad, so. Decided to do some Halloween ornaments, at least. I'm not sure where we'll put them. Right now they're just kind of in my box of finished items because we haven't been in the mood to do anything. And I was really excited for Halloween when I did these, and then just everything has kind of, kind of not very, not been very nice for a lot of us, I think. And this one in particular, I kept having a lot of trouble with it. I was trying to use gold to imply some highlights because the shading wasn't working very well. So I thought for this last one, I would do something a little bit different. And the... The thing that came out is not quite what I had in mind. I thought this was, in my head, this was going to be a lot darker. And was going to have very dark colors. I wanted only the moon to really be, to really have the only area of color. I didn't want a whole bunch of, like, bright colors on here. It was supposed to be dark and night and spooky and it wound up not at all that. I still do really like this one. It was kind of one of my favorites of the entire batch that I did. I do think it turned out really well. I just think had I been using basic tube or bottle acrylics, it probably would have come out a little bit better, but it was still super cute. And a lot of a lot of what I do for like holiday and Kind of seasonal ornaments we do a lot of stitch alongs uh we haven't done any this year just because it's been so stressful that nobody's really seemed to have a lot of interest in it and i haven't really had the time but i've always kind of avoided doing straight out holiday themes so for this one for these halloween ornaments most of them did turn out more just kind of autumn -y and kind of just you know spooky or autumn themed nothing really ever says halloween but i always kind of like to do that and it's a habit i got in because of the stitch alongs is people don't always celebrate the same holidays that i do so when we do a winter themed stitch along it's never been christmas it's never been yule it's never been hanukkah but it has been very definitely winter 
So that was kind of the same thing I was going for here. Not necessarily Halloween, but very late time of the year, very autumn, very harvesty, that kind of that kind of thing. And this was when I realized, even at this point, that I was not going to get those dark, spooky colors just because the sky was a lot brighter than I wanted it to be. And it just kept getting brighter and brighter and brighter the more I was putting this together. So it is a little bit unfortunate, but you know, that's what happens. Oh well. This one was a lot of fun though, because I haven't really ever used paint markers like this before. I've never really had them. I've had them a few times, but before when I was using them, I didn't really understand what to do because I had a lot of these as a kid and they always seemed like, I don't even know what they really seemed like, but they always seemed really limiting. Like you couldn't really do a whole lot with them because it is hard to control the paint that comes out of them sometimes. And they're not like using regular acrylic paint. They're not like using markers. It can be really hard to blend with them. It can be really hard to layer with them sometimes because the paint won't necessarily be as opaque as it appears to be. And right now I was having a lot of trouble because of the grain on the wood. It kept catching on these plastic nibs. So these plastic nibs are great on smoother surfaces, but I really should have sanded these down. I think the next time I do something like this, I'm definitely going to sand them down because the plastic nibs just did not behave. Did not behave at all. But I think what I would have done differently had I had, I think, more colors to work with and just more time to plan this out is I wouldn't have everything overlapping so much. So I've got the tree and it kind of overlaps into the house. So I had to have the tree a different color to the house to keep that contrast. And then I've got the house and it kind of has those little hills in the background. So the house had to be a different color to the background to keep those from being separated or to keep those separated. And then it was the same thing with the tree because the tree comes really close into the foreground. If I had the tree and the background the same color, they would have blended together as well. So my original idea to have everything in pretty much just tones of black and white without much color except for the moon just fell apart instantly because I didn't plan it very well. But I do really like how it all turned out and I was really, really kind of concerned because I had used the really big thick brown one for the branches and I wasn't sure how well it was going to work. But I managed to get in there even on the really small areas and then I just went back with the yellow to brighten those up and give everything a little bit more contrast. And then I have a set of black paint markers that I hadn't really had a chance to use. So I decided to use these to outline everything. And I think that really pulled it together. Even if I, even if this didn't turn out how I wanted it to, I do still really like how it turned out. I think this is super cute and it's not quite as spooky as I would have wanted, but you know, it works and I'm really, I'm really pleased with it. So these were some Halloween ornaments, some autumn ornaments, whatever you want to call them with some really cool markers. I liked both of these sets, both the fly sea and the gaudy deal markers, but I will go through and put affiliate links down to everything I use today, like always. So if you want to check these out yourself, you can go ahead and do that as well and make your own Halloween ornaments and show them to me on Twitter or Instagram. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. And I will see you next time. Bye.